You are listening to My Father's Wars by Elaine Ackworth. Performed by Barbara Lowing, Zach Bolton, Will Kelly, Kevin Spink and Elaine Ackworth. With sound design and original music by Guy Webster. Episode 1. So When Dad Died. We do not know this Australian's name. We do not know his rank or his battalion, where he was born, or precisely how and when he died. My father's dress uniform hung in the silky oak wardrobe in my parents' bedroom until he died. Mum? Pack it up, dear. Sweetheart? Are you right? For the battlefield. The wardrobe smelt of furniture oil and hat boxes and camphor. Those little mothballs wrapped in gingham. It housed hats for the races and winter long johns and big man's handkerchiefs in shades of blue and brown. The top drawer held cufflinks and tie clips. Are you right to pack it up? Yeah. I'm right, Mum. Wallets and socks. And a cigar box with his war medals and bars. Sometimes I feel I never knew my father. So, 40 years after he died, I decided to look for him in the letters and diaries of soldiers held at the John Oxley Library. Hundred-year-old letters, thin paper turning tea-coloured with age, written in a script no one writes anymore. Private Ronald Balker Cameron, 25th Battalion, 7th Brigade, Australian Infantry Division. We get fed like fighting cocks here. Dad was in 26th Battalion, 7th Brigade. They were sister battalions. Oh, I'm feeling really tip-top and going to have a little excitement in a day or two. My father left no diaries, no records. Only those medals I packed so carefully. So Ron's letters home are as close as I have come to what happened to my father. Over there. Please don't worry about me, as I'll be right as rain. I thought Keith Henley might like your father's cufflinks. Are you giving them away? He did such a nice job when he spoke. Can we keep the little dancers, please? I want to keep the little dancers. My father had a pair of cufflinks. I don't know where from. They had a black enamel background and inlaid silver Balinese dancers. When he ate breakfast in the mornings, those tiny silver dancers darted through the air. It was a good service, don't you think? The night before we shifted up the line, two boxes of cakes arrived. I ate as much as I could and gave my mates a good taste. Finished it in the trenches. I want to thank you all for coming. Please, eat, drink. The girls are coming round with trays of sandwiches. Mum, please, I want to keep the little dancers. Bask it on, darling. Bask it on, eh? As we get up with the guns, you can see flashes all over the place. And of course, the roar never stops, day or night. I don't mind the shells in the daytime, but then in the night... Oh, how a fellow gets a bit windy when a fellow's in a scrap of a dugout trying to snooze. The ground is always vibrating, sand and mud falling in on a fellow, and most likely, a drip that'll wet a fellow's blanket. October 1917, Brute Saint Ridge. The 25th and 26th were to attack. It was a bright moon that night. It lit the forward slope, so we moved up early. Under the cover of a creeping barrage, at zero hour, they were to advance from the jumping off point. All right, boys, off we go. By Jove, talk about mud, Mum. A man could go out of sight in a shell hole and stop there if somebody did not pull you out. Dad was a lieutenant. These were the officers that held the units in the trenches and in the push. The kit we carry? 220 rounds of small arms ammunition. 48 hours of rations. What was it like to take your men to the jumping off point? Two Mills bombs plus normal allotment of rifle grenades. 2 a.m., quietly, softly, following the tape or pegs the recce party had put down. Picks, spades, four sandbags, oh yes, boss. The smell of the shells, the gagging as you pass the German dead, praying for cloud, watching out for moonlight. Coming. Platoon by platoon, company by company, hitting your place and waiting. I must sign off, Mum. No sound, no lights. No smokes. Waiting. All still. Hushed. 
a strange, full hush over everything, waiting to hop over or just get up and off. For sometimes the jumping off point was just a line on a map, a line of men on their bellies in an open field. You just lie on the ground in the dark, wet, half frozen sometimes. Dad? Listening. Always listening. A few feet from the next dark lump you can just make out one of your boys. All right, Martin, get that ready smoke out. Do you want Fritz to land some on us? Dad? And you watch the west behind you, not the coming day ahead. And you see it. A distant flash. Another. Another. Like sheep lightning in early summer. And then it comes. The sound. Rushing and whistling. Shells exploding with such a noise, the earth itself is cracking open. And sometimes, sometimes the air from it hits so hard, it's like being hit by some giant's fist. Dad, is that... Can you hear it? Dad, is that you? Prepare to advance! Dad? Dad? Daddy? The boss gives the signal, and away you go. With all the men. You pull him up, your mate, and he pulls you. Your boys. You're just roaring and fighting the mud and the smoke and the fog. All of you, together. And the noise. The noise. When Dad died, he didn't want to be buried with his first wife, nor with us, his second family. He wanted to be cremated and interred in the war memorial wall at the local crematorium. Is that the furnace, Mother? He wanted to be with his boys. That's us, boys. Here we go. That's it, sweetheart. Yes. That's it. This work includes material and derived material from many sources. Thanks to the many people who provided copyright clearance or Creative Commons permissions. For more details and acknowledgements regarding the making of my father's wars, please see the State Library of Queensland webpage. 